What's going on YouTube? This is the Common Sense Professor. Today we're going to be looking at counters in Studio 5000, how to use counters, and we're going to be looking at some specific qualities of these counters. So before we get started, let's look at the two types of counters that we have in Studio 5000. We've got the count up, which is the CTU, and the count down, which is the CTD. Now you can use either one of these by themselves with a reset. And I generally always encourage you, if you use a counter in a program, no matter how you use them to use a reset, just in case your counts get off, you can always reset that value. Uh, you can even set this reset as an internal bit, so you might not want a physical button to reset, but you can go into the program or into an HMI and reset your count. Now generally, I don't know of a reason that you would use a CTD by itself. We're going to look at different ways to use these, but you can use a CTU by itself. Whenever we talk about counters, they're real similar to timers. So if you want to take a moment to go back and watch the timer video, this might help you out with this. But just like the timers, counters have specific bits associated with them whenever you create a counter tag. Here are the bits. So you have a preset bit, just like your timer, an accumulator bit, just like your timer. One difference is the CU and CD bit. On the timers, you have an enabled bit, EN. For the counters, if you're counting up, you have a CU bit that becomes energized. And if you're counting down, you have a CD bit that becomes energized. This is the bit that we're going to be using the most, and that's your done bit. And it operates just like your timers. When your accumulator value equals your preset value, then your done bit goes high. Now, the thing about counters is, your accumulator value can go above your preset value. It continues to count, but if you set your preset value at let's say 10 and your accumulator value gets to 10, your done bit will go high and remain high until that value goes below 10 again. There's a couple of bits that we don't use so often, but I just want to mention them, and that's the OV and UN. OV is the overflow. That's when it reaches past 32,767. That's our limit to our counters. And then the underflow, and that's when it reaches under negative 32,768. What happens with your counters, when it goes past 32,767, it'll go roll back through to negative 32,768 and continue to count up. The same is true for the underflow. When it goes past negative 32,768, it'll roll through to positive 32,767. Okay, so let's watch these counters in operation. I'm using an emulate program and all I'm going to do is come down and add a rung here and I'm going to add a XIC bit. We'll call this add. We're just going to add to our counter. We're going to make this an alias. Zero for our add. Okay, and I'm going to hit create. Now to start with, we're just going to use a count up by itself. So our counters is in timers and counters section. And there you see your CTU and your CTD. So we're going to add a CTU here. Just like we do our timers, we'll right click this and go to new tag. And we'll call this C1 for counter 1. You notice your data type is counter. Okay, you have to be sure, don't change that because that's what brings in those bits for your counters. Let's set our preset value at 10. Alright, so that's all you do for the counters. Now let's come down here, let's add another rung, and let's add a light that'll come on whenever our counter or C1 is done. So just like our timers, if we double click this, go to your arrow, you see C1 here, we're going to expand that and we're going to come down to our done bit and double click. Now for our light, we'll just call this light 0 and we'll alias this to our output, output 0 hit create. Now remember, if we don't have a reset to this, if we count up to 10, we get a done bit, it'll never go low again. So we're going to add a reset, XIC, and then we come into the back part just like we did for the RTO timers, and we're going to add a reset, and it works the exact same way. So we're going to pull this tag C1 down to our reset, so now we're resetting our counter, and we'll call this a reset tag, and let's make this an alias for our input 2. Alright, so let's download this to our 
emulator. Okay, now when I add to that, you see my accumulator went from zero to one. So I'm gonna add, keep adding. You also notice, remember I told you about the CU bit, which is like an enable bit. So your CU here, you can see every time that goes high. So when I get to 10, my done bit should go high. My light comes on and that's done. Now remember what I told you, you can continue to count past this. So it continues to count past that. All right, so let's reset this value and we're gonna look at, I'm gonna change this to CTD so you can see the difference. All right, so I'm gonna reset this. So go to my input two, that accumulator value goes back to zero. I'll go low again. All right, so let me change this to a CTD. And watch what happens. Watch when I add this. Look what happens. It goes low. So a way around that, and we'll reset this, is that I can add a higher value in my accumulator. I get my done bit because this is higher than my accumulator value. And then I count down. Now notice this has changed from CU to CD. And again, it acts just like an enable bit. Every time that counter goes high and then counts, that goes high. And so, wait till it gets to nine, which is below that, and my done bit goes off. Again, I really don't see much use for this by itself because you can do everything that you need to with a count up the exact same way. In order for this to go back up, we have to use a move block to move accumulator value back into this, and we're, we haven't gone over move blocks yet. So right now, that's where we're gonna leave this. Now, let me show you one advantage of having a CTD, though. I'm gonna add a rung in here in between this, and I'm gonna bring my CTD down to this rung. Now I'm gonna have another input, an XIC, and I'm gonna create a new tag, and I'm gonna call this subtract. And I'm gonna alias this. For input one, hit create. And I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to add a CTU back here. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two timers. I call these marrying them together so they act as one timer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this address, or this tag rather, up to my CTU and let go. Now this is rare. So we can use this same address for both the CTU and CTD. And what that does is that makes these two counters act as one. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. So give an example, I'm gonna change this value from 10 to five. Okay, now watch, notice that, change that automatically to five of my preset value of my countdown. So now let's watch what happens whenever I download this. Okay, now I'm gonna add I'm gonna go up to five and I'll get my done bit. My light will come on. There's my light, okay? But now let's say that we're adding good parts and our goal is to get five parts. So we got our goal, but one of those parts was bad. So we come in here to our subtract and it subtracts it. So that's the real advantage of a CTD is that you can couple it with a CTU and it will add and subtract accordingly. Now, if you want it to, let's say, make this light blink whenever it gets to a certain point, what you can do is 
is you can add our heartbeat circuit in that we talked about in cascading timers. If you haven't watched that video, be sure and go back and watch that so you know what I'm doing here. And we'll call this T1. Call this T2. And then we'll make this blink for half a second intervals. Now remember, these are going to cross each other. So we have T2 done here. And again, if you haven't watched the cascading timer video to understand what I'm doing, go back and watch that because I explain this in detail. And then we'll do our T1 done bit here. All right, now on this light, what we want to do is we want to come in and add another bit. And I'm just going to, we can choose T1 or T2, it doesn't matter because these are going to be blinking opposite each other, but I'm just going to use T1. We can use our timer timing bit off that. That's going to be on for half a second intervals. Now watch what happens. So this is blinking all the time, but we're not calling on it until we get our five parts. So let's add two more parts. And now my output light is blinking instead of just going solid at that point. All right, so that is the way that counters work. Remember, there's two counters, CTU and CTD, and I always encourage you to put a reset in with your counters. Again, even if that's an internal bit there where you can reset in case your maybe your counts get off or something like that. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I hope this video helped you. Have a great day.